May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, dear Lord. Today is Christ the King Sunday and it is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And John 18 tells us about Christ's death, about his call from God to fulfill a prophecy. And it was such a negative time for Jesus. He was persecuted, betrayed, and horribly tortured. But in the end, God promised us when he was resurrected that we would have everlasting life. And he gave us this gift, not because we deserve it or we earned it, out of his grace, out of his love for us. And he's also given us many gifts, talents, that he wishes for us to use as part of the earth that he has created. And Jesus was called just as we are called. Each one of us is called sometime. We just don't always know it. And he wants us to use our gifts to help make the world a better place because he is not happy with the way the world is right now. It is kind of a mess. And so God calls not only us, but God called Noah to build a boat. He called Moses to lead the Israelites. And he even called Zacchaeus to come for dinner. And many of you have received his call, and you have helped keep these old buildings functioning, keep the finances going, been liturgists, served on worship teams, and done many things, visited the sick, those are all calls that some of you have already met. But I'm sure a lot of us just kind of shrug our shoulders and go, well, yeah, they were called, but I really haven't been called. So I just really need to lead a good life, and I'm working hard to be a good Christian. Well, what if God is calling you? Did you think about that? What if he's calling you and you're not answering the phone? Are you letting it go to the answering machine? Well, how do we know that God is calling us? I think that's the big question we have. Because I think if we know a little more, we might find out, oh, I have been called and I know what that is. So and I would be doing a disservice to you to say that God only calls people to be ministers or missionaries or martyrs. He values each of you and the gifts that you give. So how do you know that God is calling you? First of all, you need to know what your gifts are. Are you good at sewing or cooking or pounding a nail? When people say, oh, you're so good at that, that's a gift. You may say, oh, no, but yes, that's your gift. And if you're passionate about something, you may not be totally great at it, but you're passionate about it, that's a gift. And God's call is a nudge. So the four ways we'll know that God is calling is first he'll get your attention. And for me, that's usually some kind of a thought that comes into my brain as I'm waking up in the morning or if I've asked a question the night before. And for you, you might have a thought about Mary Jones and you think, well, she's been sick. I haven't seen her in a long time. And you're getting a call from God to say, give her a call. Check her out. And when you call, you make such a difference in her life. You raise her spirits because she was getting very depressed. Second, he'll give you first steps. So for you, you might be very good at creating flower arrangements. and uh, But your church really wants you to include, encourage others to do their own arrangements. And so you call the next person on the list and you talk about arrangements and they create the most astounding arrangement that you had ever thought of that totally honors God's beautiful nature. Third, he'll provide what you need and send you helpers. Let's say you're the chair of the pumpkin patch and you're going, oh, no, look at all these holes, all these people that aren't coming. God, I'm working for the food bank <laughs> to raise money. People are hungry. Could you send help? And several days later, somebody from another church might come up and say, 
we'd love to help. Would that be okay? And of course you would say yes. And finally, he'll reassure you. Maybe you've never uh, been a chair of a committee and you have to run your first meeting and you're just saying, God help me. And he puts in your mind some questions that you might ask. And so you ask, what joy do you find when you uh, worship here at the church? And from that, you learn all sorts of things about people and people begin to become committed to each other. So I'd like to share with you my call that I got recently from God. I have been planning for quite a while to take a trip with a group to Morocco. And I was supposed to leave in in November. And um, then I had another trip that came up that was a good price. and But I had to wait two weeks in between in Morocco. So I wasn't sure what to do. I called friends and my some of my relatives. Wouldn't you like to go to Morocco and I'll show you all around? No. So and then I thought, well, maybe I could just go find a pretty place on the ocean and just veg for a week or two, you know. But that didn't feel right. And then I got this nudge from God that said, how about working in an orphanage? And I said, well, I don't know, God, it's hard to find people that will let you work in orphanages, but I'll try. And sure enough, on my first call, I met this wonderful woman, Wafa, who lives here in America and uh, supports orphanages. And we just really hit it off over these beautiful orphans. And I thought I could help her in one way, but then I found there's only one uh, caregiver. And so I had to start thinking about how I could help the babies in their cribs. And out of that came all these sensory ideas into my head. And I made um, flyers and sent them out asking for some support if people could donate um, old rattles and blankets that they had. And I didn't get very much of response. I was kind of disappointed and I didn't get any rattles. So um, he provided my first steps. I prayed again to him and said, God, I hate to bother you with this, but I need help with these rattles if, if I'm going to have them to take. And sure enough, that week I get a call from a woman whose uh, daughter and her son-in-law had been to Morocco. She had a one-year-old baby. And they said, we would just so love to bring something for you for these babies. And uh, she said, what do you need? And I told her about the rattles. And they brought these boxes of just beautiful toys. Beautiful. And um, so I had that taken care of. But... Now I'm sitting there thinking I really would like people to be involved and to help make things because I'm making things that are inexpensive also so that people real can realize they can make things themselves. They don't have to buy expensive toys. And um, so I was a little leery about asking people to help me because that's kind of backfired on me sometimes. But God reassured me. You know what he did? I got a call, another phone call from a woman in the neighborhood who said, I saw your flyer, and I am so excited about that. I'm talking it up with my friends, and we would love to help you in any way that we could. And that assured me that, you know, I should have a meeting and get started on this. And so I have. God is so great. So I ask you to pray. Pray for my um, work with the orphans and that it will go well and I can meet their needs And if you love to glue, cut, or sew, please join me when I have a work party and help one of those little special infants. And remember, we talked about this uh, when I preached last time. You are God's hands and legs and feet. He works through you. He will tell you what to do. He will make it work. He just needs your input and help. And so my final word is, words to you or to say, please say yes when God calls. Open yourself up. You might be amazed at what happens. I'll close with Mother Teresa's words. She says, I see God in every human being. When I nurse or wash a leper's wounds, I feel like I am nursing the Lord himself. Amen.